Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Get On Extra. Last week we were on the Gold Coast, this week we are back in the studio. I am joined by Captain Coconut Oil himself. Welcome back Simo. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> when on the coast, always have a little spare bottle of the coconut oil because you too can look like me and have the Jackie Chan just flowing beautifully. Lizzie, it's great to be back oh, with you. It is great. How time flies. I know. It's been a very interesting week last week but we've still got some fantastic races to cover this week. We're looking forward to Flemington, mm. Eagle Farm. We'll also be previewing uh, Rose Hill as well. And without a further ado, I wanted to welcome in someone who I have met once before. And this was the welcome that he gets when he tips to a room full of ladies. The one and only John Kelton is hey, here in the house. Johnny. Now, Simon, do you think you can match this energy as we welcome in? Well, Lizzie, the you were hosting the ladies' luncheon this day. <laughs> Bold <Terrible>. Eagle, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the team. Thanks a lot, Lizzie. Yes, Steve, really good to be here. <laughs> yeah, Woo! and Johnny, fantastic stuff. But Lizzie. We, what we weren't able to show, and we don't have enough time, there was your intro to that uh, wonderful ladies' events, and she said we got some strapping young colts that have come in and tip you all the winners today, and in walked a couple of geldings, Terry McAuliffe <laughs> and Johnny Kelton. But uh, a rousing, uh, uh, warm there welcome, wasn't it? It was. I'd like to think I get that every Saturday at Morpheville, but uh, that was a once-off, and those ladies were loving that lunch. They're having a lot of fun. Well, that's the sort of reaction that you get from your tips. I don't know whether we'll be able to do that today. Right. I said tips, OK? OK, yes. Very good. <laughs> that's really and, nice. uh, you have to be on your toes with this one. And uh, did we recruit anybody for racing with Lizzie? or? Oh, there's a few there. Yeah. Few there. Oh, few good. Few Girls from South ladies. Australia. Yeah, we, yeah, a few ladies from South Australia. Oh. Looking forward to racing a few horses. And we're looking forward, Big not only out. to racing a few horses, we're looking forward to early cash. We're trying to find our best bets from races one to three across the country. And we're looking at a couple of races at Flemington. You're going to kick things off. Gentlemen I am. first. Yeah, I'm pretty keen in uh, race one at Flemington, Super Razzi. He's racing really well. And Carleen Heffel, we get a little bonus claim here because she actually outrode her claim Wednesday. The fields had already come out. She gets the one and a half claim. Just looks like a tactical race. Bermudez, the other favourite, might just have uh, a couple of lengths to make up on him. Yep, a small field. Bermudez in that race is probably the other horse to beat there. But a special shout out to Carleen. Carleen! You know what I mean. <laughs> Michelle Payne, Katie May, and not too many of the female yeah, girls so outright their claim. Have outridden their claim, and she's the third female to do it in Victoria. 100%. So, well, good on to you. Uh, well, good on you, Carleen. Uh, let's get to my tip. Uh, race two, number eight, Gallius, uh, Galileus, I should say. This horse having his first Oz start, this ex-import, had no luck at uh, Mooney Valley. He got back, got held up, lost his spot at the 700. And what I liked uh, is he just got on heels as well uh, when he was crowded trying to make ground when he saved a little bit of ground from the 2040 Gallop. Now, what I liked about him, he was still honest and he finished right up there, Ginger. He gets to Flemington on a bigger track. 2,500 metres is the key, and he drops four kilos. Galileos, I think, will bring his best form here in his second Australian start. A couple of early tips for Flemington. I'm going to go up to Eagle Farm. It's a horse that I've seen in Sydney called Commanding Artist, so race one, number one. I thought he ran really well behind parkour last time out. It looks a very winnable race for him. So he heads up the highway with Gerald Ryan and Sterling Alexio as trainer, and I think he will be hard to beat kicking things off at Eagle Farm. Going to reset and have a look at our Flemington preview. Of course, we don't have any feature racing at Flemington at the weekend, but we do have some really good benchmark races. There's a bit of a lull between carnivals. We've got the next few weeks, we've got a, a few of the races where we're going to see a few horses potentially move on through the autumn carnivals and looking forward to seeing how this meeting plays out. Who have you got for us? No doubt we're not far off Blue Diamond previews. Can you it's believe crazy. it for the two-year-olds? So Flemington rail out nine. We'll race on a good four track. Uh, some irrigation being put over night on Thursday and Friday nights to keep it at a good four rail out nine should race perfect 15 uh, not wins uh, so uh, I like race three number 10 Kiko this uh, horse has finally found its form again now promised a lot early doors for the Jim Conlon stable what I liked is Jim was able to take her to Doombin had a really good run ran second there residual fitness came back no luck Mooney Valley first up goes to Cranbourne bada bing bada bang wins by three lengths and says take me back to Flemington where I've got the ruthless name form and wasn't far off a horse called Yellow Brick Road Road. That's group three form. I uh, was about inside four lengths off that runner. Kiko drops to 51 kilos. Tatum Bull. Come on, man. 
give me something early. Yeah, it does look as though it's a very nice race for Kiko. Also was scratched from last night at Pakenham, save for this race and drawn a really uh, nice draw. I'm also at Flemington. I thought the return uh, of Osmar last preparation was very impressive and I'm really keen to stick with this three-year-old filly. The only blip in her copybook was at the end of last preparation mm. at the Valley when she stepped up to the Champagne, but I thought that the fact is she's kicking things off. I know she's got a top weight, but she just looks a really classy conveyance. So race four, number one, Osmar is one of my better bets at the Flemington card. The other horse that I really like is Dehorned Unicorn. I've probably tipped this horse for, I don't know, a lot of times, but I reckon the Joe Pride factor, we've seen how good Joe is bringing horses back from, uh, say, New South Wales to Victoria and just switching them around. And I think he's found a perfect race for him. So seven, four, uh, Dehorned Unicorn is another one of my bets at Flemington. John, what do you like? I'm going to wait till later in the day and have something on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Race 9, number 10. Gee, the Freedmans have got him flying at the moment. Damien Lane, Cushy Gate. And one thing I like about him, he's been hitting the line really well this preparation. I think he'll be hard to beat again. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I thought that was one of the toughest races on the program. Big field there, Johnny, too. And we've had yep. some interest. Uh, right and Rose is an interesting runner resuming there for the Moody Coleman stable. But uh, Elkington Road has also had some interest. Helix, I thought, was unlucky last start. And so risque. He's had a little bit of early money in that race. Tough race. I'm going to take your on spoiler alert for me back, Zach and Crack, yep. later on. Uh, but I've got another one on the program, and this is my best. You know what I love? I, lo I love Nick Ryan, the way he's going about it and placing his horses really well. We're going to have to wait, wait till race 10, and there's a horse called, it's a great name, Johnny Rocker. <laughs> he's first up for Nick Ryan, this ex-Queensland runner. Now, in his first preparation, he was able to win a maiden and then a listed race. And then he was put out, and then he was tackled. Uh, his next three gallops in his second preparation, he tackled pretty good uh, form at listed level. Put away, new trainer, Nick Ryan, three trials. Watch his last little trial. And you know what I like? There's been a push in the market early. Good money for Johnny Rocker, John Allen to ride. He's got some really strong form if you go back a year, year and a bit ago up in Queensland. He's raced in a couple of good races as a younger horse. That's the form I'm tapping into, Mr That's, Kelton. It's very, it's very seldom that you see a horse from the Nick Ryan or enter into the Nick Ryan stable that doesn't improve. Yep. He's yep. got a fantastic record with those uh, tried horses that he has got. Mm. Yeah, looking forward to seeing Johnny Rocker. He's um, certainly a horse that's got plenty of talent and Nick's been able to get the best out of a lot of tried horses that he's been able to gain in his stables. Well, we thought we'd uh, set you a bit of a task and we're looking for our best bets elsewhere. And John, you've come up with a couple at Camperdown. I'm happy to have a little play at Camperdown. The first one I've got is a horse that I actually saw trial at Mount Gambier a couple of weeks ago. It's a first starter for Belinda O'Loughlin called Nan Keen. Uh, Mickey Isle Gilding, who was a really cheap uh, purchase online, I think she only paid a grand or two for it, and Ooh. trolled up quite nicely at Mount Gambier after the races recently. I notice it's in at Camperdown. It's also in at Mount Gambier Sunday. Not sure which way it goes, but uh, either way, I'm going to have something on uh, Nan Keen in race one. Yep. And the other one I'm pretty keen on is Thunder Point later in the day at Camperdown. Simon Wilde, Dean Yendall. Raced in a very strong form race last start. Host gelding, if there's a bit of give in the track, which currently there is, I think he'll be really well suited. Really got his eye on too, Simon Wild now, placing his horse as well. Got a couple of really good early uh, autumn contenders that are winning at the moment, Lizzie. Yes, well, you are the South Australian expert. So this, is this the top male that we're getting? Uh, well, it's one that uh, I was really taken with its uh, barrier trial. It was only a little field. They often in the SA country areas just do the one trial after the last. And uh, I liked what I saw. <laughs> There's a little smile from him. I reckon we're getting the good mail. He never gives you the B set. <laughs> I found that out, well, John, this is going to be probably your favourite segment when you walk away. Yes. It's time for Jelfs on the Shelf. <laughs> Looking forward uh, to seeing what we have this week. Well, we had Magic Millions Week. We had Captain Coconut Oil. We had so much to look forward to throughout the week. But I think this clip could take it all. Have a look at Paul Snowden. He was completely overawed after his win of King of Sparta. It's always a great day to, to be involved in. Obviously, um, you know, the children come up when they can. It's, they've got a bit of extended family up here, so it's, it's a bit of a holiday for them as well. Introduce us all to them, mate. Harper. Uh, Madison's the eldest. We've got, um, this is little Paris. And um, <laughs> I've had a metal blank. Um, Sienna, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our wedding. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Paulie, fantastic. Well, when you got four daughters and, and your wife in the mix, I, say, I guess you're going to forget one name, but nah. How about that? He's not going to relive that. What about his wife saying, just like our wedding, <laughs> no, no. you forgot something. There is a bit of a backstory to this. Richo was telling me that uh, he was interviewing uh, them on the red carpet and it was very soon after Paul had met Crystal and he said to Peter, oh, introduce me to the family. And so he said, oh, well, you know, Paul. And, and then he went to turn to Crystal and he said, and... Um, 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 right. and he forgot Crystal's name. No. So that's why he then said to Richo, it's just like our wedding. <laughs> and a big thank you to Channel 7 and have Richo on the show. Get on yes. extra. You Richo's beauty. back. I'd love to get him on here someday. I would love to get him on Good here. Lord. All what right, else you got for us, Esty? <laughs> okay, now, oh, this has come through my, uh, on my desk there. Yeah, we've got carried away now. We've got Joey Anderson here. Our transmission is the oh, horse of Plumpton. Seat. We're going over the sticks. Over Watch the, the horse in the pink cap, black colours. Oh, down on the nose there. He does the helicopter over the neck. And then he's got to try and climb back on. Does he get on, get on? Of course he does. He's a horseman. So he's riding long. He's trying to find his irons. There's a jump coming up. In the middle of the race there, horse with the nose roll on. He still hasn't got his irons. Watch him. Up and over. Oh, that's not good for the hemorrhoids, I'm sure. And then he gets to the next. Now, can he stay on? The horse is obviously struggling. He's still trying to find his irons. Now, he gets himself balanced right here. He's got him. What a horseman. But now, can he pick this horse up and try no and get way. it to the front? Last hurdle. Picks it up. Look at Joey Anderson now. Gets the chicken wings going. A little tap behind the saddle. Now, if that's not a horseman at his best, under pressure, I don't know what is. Adrenaline oh, will goodness. make you stay on, but to get up and win, that is a remarkable and deserves three votes. Three that votes. It's fantastic, isn't it? Unbelievable. I, yeah. I mean, to even stay on, but to win the race in the end, <laughs> what have you got to say? Nothing. I was able to get away with something on there, so we didn't have the dump button. I'm happy. Lizzie, play on. <laughs> what, do you, what have you got for us, John? <laughs> well, we know in South Australia, we're often a bit behind the times, and I'll start with when I got to the airport today and went through the news agent. I just thought I'd grab the best bets to uh, just polish up my form. And uh, Being Thursday, comes yep. out Wednesday night, yeah. Grabbed this little fella here and uh, got on the plane, and it's Magic Millions Day. So <laughs> Last week. <laughs> yeah, so we've grabbed last week's best bets, amazingly. So, so Well, it's true uh, to form then, yep, South Australia, I'd, a few days. Behind. Had a crack. Storm boy should be hard to beat. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon you got a book full of winners there, Almanac there, Johnny Kelton. And then we were up at Murray Bridge last Saturday, and this actually was the meeting that the tumbleweeds destroyed yeah, thanks, the year Nigel. before. Look, uh, the oh. has and then this is Terry the McAuliffe at the end of the meeting after we had a power outage. I think the hamster went out for lunch and stopped operating the wheel. <laughs> We can see Terry there on the whiteboard there. He's always very organised and he's got the no bin collection sign on his whiteboard. And I notice when I come to the races, he's always there before me, always prepping up first. But the other side of the whiteboard is even more interesting if we have a look at that. Right. And um, we can see that uh, Terry's got his uh, eye on trying to out-tip me uh, for Get On SA next year and it hasn't started well for him. A thousand, what's that? Uh, yeah, no, you're well in front. Oh, right, a thousand percent. Wow. <laughs> A bit more than that, Lizzie. But anyway, Tezza. Oh, you're on the back foot as always. But he um, is well prepared, isn't well he? Well organised. Is. Yeah. No bid collection. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so he's never going to live that down. Let's head to a break. I'll get on extra. <laughs> we talk. One of those horses is the one that I want to be with in Zesty Man. Zesty Man's lunging now. Zesty Man finishes the better and gets the money. I think the wind is the only thing that can get this favourite beat, though, in Otago. You guys are also with Otago. <laughs> yeah. Centre, Otago takes the lead. He's a little bit too good, but only just. The other horse that I really like is Union Army Race 9. Yeah, I agree with you, Lizzie. I thought uh, Union Army looked ready to win. And Union Army powers over the top. It is uh, Testator Silence. Testator Silence, though, goes home best. Uh, race 6, number 5, Derry Grove. Derry Grove, one last thrust. <laughs> Photo finish. Derry Grove put in a really good dive. The horse that I'm tipping likes the Gold Coast as much as SD Marshall, King of Sparta. King of Sparta, King of the Gold Coast. King of Sparta wins again. I'm with the favourite in uh, Storm Boy. I think he will win. Lizzie, can you back me up? Yeah, look, I think he is definitely the horse to beat. It's all Storm Boy, and Storm Boy is too good for them in the two-year-old. Oh, what about this? Too darn Lizzie. Ha, ha, ha. It just wins. It just wins. Too darn Lizzie, too darn good for them. 
Too Darn Lizzy wins the debut for the Phillies. Being oh, what a fantastic yes. week yeah. on the Gold Coast. And well tipped by Beasy. Good job yourself. I'm sure there'll be plenty of yep. winning tips for this week uh, yep. from John Kelton. But it was a good week of racing. Great week of racing. And it was a massive build-up from the coast. It had a little bit of everything there. So we're just trying to emulate that this week. Yes, looking now, forward to... You've uh, been up buying on the Gold Coast and bought a yearling by Too Darn Hot. Yes. Your name's taken. I know, exactly. I'm so disappointed. I, well, we might call it Too Darn Betty. What do you reckon? What about, yeah, Betty Boo, that is <laughs> for sure. <laughs> or uh, Three Darn Lizzie. There's, what about there's, that? There's so many ways we could go. But uh, there's also, we have that Rose Hill preview coming up as well. Plenty of racing up at Rose Hill Gardens. And we're going to kick things off with you, Simon. Uh, yeah. This is a, a horse named after you last week. You were gently rolled. Gently rolled, that's right. Uh, the, with the, uh, well, yes, the coconut oil <laughs> on the sand for sure. First up, this horse has got a really good um, record. Five starts for the uh, two wins and the three placings. I like the third at Randwick last preparation. And uh, what I do like is the way this horse has been prepped up, well placed here. J Mac Gate 4. Uh, only second prep lightly race. And Bryce Hayes has got his eye in too. He's aiming up really well so I think we can get the cash with gently rolled the four-year-old man we're both on the same horse uh, in race number five Kabbalas he finds himself with a new owner and a new trainer mm. he was previously trained by Chris Waller remember his first up win was really excellent and then he sort of went off the boil a touch but yeah. I think he's found a really nice race he's He's drawn well and he's also been trialling nicely. So he sold a few of his horses, Chris Waller, that he just thinks a benchmark and didn't go on. He's still a colt. He's still got his Niagara Falls. So it's a play from uh, Bjorn Baker and his team, Darley, who have bought yeah, this Dar horse. Yeah, Darby bought this Darby. horse. But they, they paid a fair amount of money for him in the tried horse sale. So, yeah. But he's a talented horse. And if they can get him back, I mean, by what, uh, I'm invincible, I yes. think he is. So he's a very, very uh, valuable colt if he can get up and win. But what I like about uh, Team uh, Derby is they get it right. They do their homework well. Joshy Parr from gate four, and I love the way, see, uh, Bjorn Baker doesn't muck around in trials. Chris likes to be a bit softer. This horse had a searching gallop in his last trial, and he was stimulated, and he's ready to rock and roll. So that 1,100-metre win at Randwick, I think if he can bring that form in this race first up, they want to get the cash early with their new purchase. Yep, couldn't agree with you more. John, you and I are both with a horse in race number seven, Powerful Peg, 7-7. Seven, seven. She looks yeah. as though she's found a nice race for her. She does. I really liked her first up run. She covered a bit of extra ground. She was pretty game to the line. She's got the record of a good horse. 15 starts, 6 wins, 5 placings. Going through her grades nicely. Second up, 1,400 metres. I think she's going to run a good race. Yeah, I think she will be very hard to beat. And another horse that will be hard to beat is Step Aside, who you're also with. He's a really consistent horse. I think in his whole career he's only been beaten by two lengths at the most. And even though he's been just round the mark and beaten as a short price favourite last start, he continues to race well. Drawn inside by Redwood, they often like being held up back in the field. He's going to be charging late, slightly up in trip. See, I'd sing it, Step Aside, the eye of your mind. But it's inside, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no. You're a special oh, one, you okay. are. All right, um, with this horse, supper. I think if you... I would love you to go back and watch the replay if you're not already on him. Our Kobe son, he was absolutely brilliant last time out. So race nine, number six, I thought he absolutely flew. If he find, found this type of race for him, he should get a lovely run in transit. It's going to be pretty short, but I think he's one of those bets that you can anchor in any part of your betting strategy. I think he's going to be very, very hard to beat. I didn't say very, 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 but uh, he's Six definitely... Six very, ZI? Yeah. He he was six. I was oh. three. So that's pretty confident for me. Is it a two-down Lizzie <laughs> yeah. type of tip? I think, yeah, definitely a two-down Lizzie type oh, of tip. Geez, like the other that. horse who I also like is at Kembla Grange on Saturday. Race seven, number three, Suit of Armour. Looks to get a good run in transit uh, for Alicia Collett. And again, should be hitting the line strongly and has got a tidy little mm. record. Just going year. back to powerful peg, race seven, number seven there. Who's got the, uh, the most powerful peg, Port Adelaide? You love your footy team over there. Yeah, um, Charlie Dixon's always got a big boot on him and uh, I've been a fan of him for a long time, and uh, I think 2024 is the year of the power. What about oh. Houston? We have a problem. Dan. <laughs> Absolute gun. Absolute right. star. Ooh, he woofs it. He does. He's, he's got a beautiful leg, and he's quite accurate. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on board this year. <laughs> Very right. good. There you go. I'm nearly on board too. Here we go. <laughs> it's time for drum kit. Let's have a look at our best place plays over the weekend. Simon, you are going to Flemington for your best each way. Yeah, this race, uh, race four, number two, there's, um, look, there's some exposed horses that are really in great form, but Celestial Storm's going about uh, its business very well. Broke through at Flemington uh, first up over the 1,000 metres, steps up to the 1,100, and 
did win comfortably. Look, there's a question mark to the second and the third horse. The form behind that haven't really gone on. But the stable is flying. I love the antenna Blake Shin and uh, is a second up winner. So good value. Celestial Storm, which is race four to Flemington. Yep, I'm also backing up what you said earlier on. I'm uh, with race eight, number four, Step Aside. He's just such a progressive horse. So he's my best place play over the weekend. And you are playing in your own backyard. I thought I might. Uh, yeah, Lizzie, I'm going to go to Gawler race eight, number two, Pearl Adios. Strong finishing second, first up at 1,200 metres. Stays at this trip, might get back at midfield or a shade worse, but he will be running on. I think he's a good chance to run at least a place at around about that even money the place. Nice. Mm. Now, as you know, we just got back from the coast. Yeah. And I happened to venture up to Movie World because I got a, a lot of people I wanted to meet, and in particular, a lot of my heroes. Hey, there's <laughs> Beetlejuice. What up, Beetlejuice? There's Gooey, Daggy, and all the team. Fantastic. Stuff enough to see the wizard for a brain, a heart, and some <laughs> courage. And there, zoom in, have a look at the bloke on the left. Now, he said he wasn't on the coast, but that's BZ. <laughs> that's BZ dressed up as Flash. Ah, uh, look at that. It's Zedi. There's nothing he can't do. Yes, That's exactly. very, 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 very much like Brent Zarafa in the it flashy. Is. Form. Right, we had to a break on get an extra. <laughs>breath smelt like bourbon and coke and he said to me boy you're the number one bald eagle now and john when i see what you've done punting wise in recent history i now feel a special day has come for you as i hand the mantle over to you now as the number one <laughs> bald eagle oh, oh. three votes see john <laughs> Imagine yep. getting three votes from C. Judd. That's pretty impressive. Well, Johnny, uh, as uh, that Get On SA, that was put, put together beautifully. But Terry yeah. McCall, if he's a Carlton supporter, how, how did oh. he sweat how, up? Uh, how excited was he to see Chris <laughs> Judd? And uh, no doubt he's going to want something similar in uh, this year at some stage. But that was very kind of Chris Judd. And uh, I've been feeling a bit of pressure since then. Well, you know, yeah. you, well, we've going to put even more pressure on you because yep. we're looking to find some best bets elsewhere and we thought no better place to look than Gawler, your home track and looking yeah. forward to seeing what you've come up with and it actually happens to be that SD's come up with the same horse. Really interesting runner and this horse has got bigger fish to fry and uh, she'll be debuting here at Gawler in race one, Kuro Yanagi, a high price written tycoon filly. She has been sensational in recent jump outs and trials and she's got the action of a good horse. Uh, a few of the uh, the opposition have already dodged her. There's been a couple of scratchings. Black figures were bet early. She is going to start very short. I'm expecting her to win easily. In your opinion, do you think that she's going to be a two-year-old that will be able to mix it with the best, even though we're only seeing her for the first time? Exactly whether she's up to that group one type level, I don't know. But her times she's been running in her trials and jump outs have been good. She's got a lovely action. She moves well. The Clark and O'Shea Yard are going to look for an easy kill here and uh, hopefully she she wins and uh, gets over to the Eastern States and has a crack at the big money. And why I'm with you too, John, is she is a big spruik, this two-year-old, but Jamie Carr just doesn't flick across the South Australia just to ride any yeah. horse. She got the call up and she was very, very impressed. And then Will Price, I think, um, was it Benny or Will? Ben the, Price. Ben, ben Price, Price rode her in her next trial and she was very smooth, got a great action. So with that, she's been one of the biggest movers in your futures markets for the Blue diamond but here's my early movers for you folks on get on extra now storm boy will he run in the blue diamond after winning the magic millions in that superb time seven into 350 if you like bold bastille wins on cox plate day in the inglis 14 into seven at this stage bodyguard's been rock solid after his maribyrnong trial win now stay focused uh this horse was fantastic stay focused winning at geelong the very important two-year-old race 34 to nine's coleman he won uh the coleman won um he won the debut on at Caulfield and Anisa won last start. They're 21 to 11 and there's the filly Kuro Yonagi. Uh, 51 into $15 is the big 
push at the price. So she's mm. expected to win there on Saturday. That, that's a big move prior to her debut run that uh, someone's been really taken by that recent barrier trial. Mm. You've also got a couple of other bets that you want to highlight at Gawler. I have. <laughs> I think the Clark and O'Shea yard will be in for a big day early. They actually train the next two bets I'm having a look at. The first one is in race two, number three, Cullen Skink. Lightly raced Highland Real Gelding, who steps out to 2,100 for the first time. He's had three runs this preparation. He's won all three. He's building a good horse's record. Seven starts, four wins. He's the horse with the most upside in that race. And then in the next race, the Clark and O'Shea Yard are going to supply the favourite again in second to none, who's actually a horse that I bred and part own. And oh. Oh. I've been wrapped with how she's been going for young Rochelle Milnes, who rode her first city winner on this mare a couple of weeks ago. She retains the ride and uh, she's been hitting the line super. And that's your Saturday best. What do you like at Gawler? Now, yeah, come on, man. Last time we tipped the uh, second to none on the show, Johnny just was a bit soft, didn't really want to go with us. Now you're pushing He's it strong. He's pushing it. Yep. Hello, ding, ding, seconds out, double down there now. Bet responsibly. Uh, Jack's on ice. I like the way this horse has been going about his business. And you know what? There's not much between this field. And Jack's on ice is third up. I think he gets the best run. And the key is Jake Toro goes back on. He's got a great relationship yep. with the, this horse. Richard Chantel Jolly train him. They're still getting a handle on him, of course. But he's ready to win. He can roll forward and sit up on speed. He's also got Blinker's first time, and maybe he was just a length or two below his best last start. He's a natural leader. Blinker's on, Toro on. You can expect him to go straight oh, to the another, front. Another good push. Well, Ooh. let's head to Sunday session. We love to have a Sunday session and find ourselves a few winners. And SD Marshall, well, you're going to Mornington. Have I? Yes, I do. And you know what? Don't Race make... 7, number 2, perfect Matt ending. Matt Kamani. And he's using the claim three here too, so perfect ending, race seven, number two. This horse just got squeezed at a really important stage at Seymour first up. Didn't get the galloping room that he needs. Now, one, he's made in second up, and he's a winner at Mornington at the end of his preparation. He'll roll forward up on speed, and he'll give you a really good run. Race seven, number two at 4.20. And you're going to Mount Gambier? I am, Mount Gambier Sunday, and I'm with a Victorian visitor in Prickly Prince for the Dan Bowman stable. He's second up here at the Mount up to 2100 or the extended 2050 there. He was good at Warnable first up in what looks like a pretty good form race. He's a lightly race stayer. He came over to SA a while ago at Murray Bridge and was really impressive. Yeah. Couple of Can nice you say that three there. times really quickly? Prickly Prince, Prickly Prince, Prickly Prince. You too go. Good. She's too good. <laughs> right, let's time for back sack and crack. Let's have a look at our best bets at double figure odds. And Simon, you can kick things off. What's wrong with Impressive Enough's form going into this? At $13, and look, I know Ray uh, Magnerio and all those sort of horses are really in good form, but he's still on the way up. Josh, back from 1300 he's a winner down the straight. I'm at Rose Hill in the last race. Pioneer last looks to get a really good run in transit at the $11 currently. I think there's going to be a few scratchings from wide barriers in that race, so take that price at the moment. And John, you've trumped us again, a $15 shot. Well, hopefully, uh, Lizzie, I'm keen on hard squeeze. Jamie Carr gets the ride. Big expanses of Flemington should suit this mare. At her best, she's got a nice turn of foot. Let's have a look what we think is under the odds. And SD, oh. What are you doing to me? <laughs> well, I think it's the hardest race at Flemington. It's a big, deep field, and Helix will go well. Space Trader also. Right and Rose first up. Lafarge's flying, and Elkington Road are your dangers. Don't worry. I That's think right. that one of his bets is also going to get beaten as well. Gently rolled. I don't think he's been trialling up that nicely, so I think he's uh, definitely my one to sack. They don't play prize money in trials, does he? <laughs> All right, John. And I'm going to get Billy Bronx beaten in the last at Gawler. She's a handy mare, but 1500's probably at the extent of her distance range, and I think she's just been a length or two off what she can do this prep. Yeah, be off your Johnny Rocker. <laughs> if you didn't put this or one out in the last race at Flemington in your quaddy. Oh. oh, I think that our Kobe Sone is going to be very, very, very hard to beat. <laughs> and I'm hoping that second to none will be just that in race three at Gawler and she uh, couldn't be racing any better recently. Well, well, we. well, now this is also another highlight of the show. SD, it's your bet. OK. What do you call a chicken-proofed garden? What do you call a chicken-proofed garden? Impeccable. I know. I've got another one too there. 90% of bald people still own their comb. They find it very hard to part with, Johnny. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Okay. Fantastic, Thank Esther. I'm back so in the studio. What to say. I know. It's the coconut oil. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.